one of the best examples is so simple. It's just, you know, all these symbiotic relationships, but one of my favorite ones is just birds and bees and flowers and plants. How could you have flowers that need to be cross-pollinated with other plants? That's how, that's how they reproduce. They need, they rely on insects to be able to do that. And you know what? The insects, the bees, rely on the nectar and their pollen to be able to survive and to make their hives and to do everything else. They need each other equally to survive. And through evolution, if things were just coming about just randomly through random process, through survival of the fittest, which survival of the fittest just means more creatures are dying than anything else. Because that just happens to be the one that survives. It's not this great expansion of life, it's a reduction of life. That's what survival of the fittest is, folks. When you're in a harsh condition, only so many people are going to make it through. Well, you're reducing a population, not expanding it. Which is, again, just completely contrary to this concept of evolution. Oh, there's all these new species and all this new... Well, that's not survival of the fittest then. And how could you have... I mean, what would be the odds of that happening of two creatures morphing, changing, evolving into something that's going to be completely 100% reliant on one another? And see, I like to just throw time at it. Well, I mean, yeah, of course, in, in 100 years that can't happen, but, you know, over millions and millions of years and that could happen. No, it can't happen in a day, it can't happen in a year, it can't happen in a thousand years, and it can't happen in a million years. Sorry, it just doesn't happen. It's not the way that God created things. Dogs don't become cats. Cats don't become birds. You, you cannot observe this. But what they like to do is they like to show you where there is microevolution, evolution within creatures themselves where they could change and adapt to their surrounding, which, again, is another amazing design of God in his creation to create beings that if their environment changes are able to adapt to still survive within that environment. What foreknowledge, what insight, what great planning to allow in their DNA code the ability to be able to adapt. That's amazing. That doesn't happen by chance. It's not just, oh, our environment changed. Now my body or my, you know, creature's body is just going to start doing different things because the environment changed without the body knowing how to do those things. When you study things down, you know, the, the body's doing what it's programmed to do. The functions of all your organs are doing what they're designed to do. That's pre-programmed. It requires intelligence to even function. The apparent age, with human beings, we see that with Adam and Eve. We see that with the fruits bearing trees. I mean, you think about it. If you were to look at Adam on day one of creation, he's going to look like a mature adult. And if anyone were to ask you, if you were to see him, be like, man, how old is that guy? I don't know. I mean, 20, 30, 40, depending on how he looked, right? You just look at him and say, yeah, that's what, what he looks like. But he'd really be a day old. If you were to look at the trees, look at maybe there's some redwood trees, right, that are fully mature. Well, how long have these been? Well, man, these have been, these are, you know, to get the tree that big, that must have been around for hundreds of years or whatever. But at creation, it's day one. So the other problem that's, that science has with trying to date things is that you're going to end up looking at things that God created instantly to look like they've been there for a really long period of time. And that fact alone is enough to skew results. And you know, for those of you that know anything about like, like astronomy, and quantum theory and all that, you know, there, there's different measurements that you can take where they try to determine how far away galaxies are and stars are and things like that. And look, there's nothing wrong in general, you know, like with science, science that's true science is good, 
But when they're trying to say things are so far away, but then how can we possibly see those light if it takes light so long to, to travel across you know, the space to get here? Okay, I mean, you're still following some science. So yeah, I get that. I, I could see that. And I could see where you could be confused, except for the fact that when God created everything, he already created that light travel path to be in existence on day one so that Adam can see stars. He didn't create the stars on day four, like just, okay, the light's there, and now that light has to travel to get to the earth. So that way on day six when Adam was created, he looks up and he doesn't see anything because he's waiting for the light to get there. No, he already made that light path and way and all the, the, the photons and everything there at that moment. And if you don't understand that and have that faith, you're going to come up with all kinds of wrong answers when you're trying to determine ages of things without considering and going back to the beginning, going back to the start. It's so important, the Genesis, the beginning. It's, it's the first book of the Bible. Genesis means the beginning. It's the creation. It's, it's, it's the beginning of everything. If you're going to understand a theory about how everything came into being, you have to go back to the beginning and no matter how many theories of evolution they try to push and try to use all this other evidence, you have to go, well, where does life come from? And they turn to abiogenesis, which is life came from nothing. Living material came from non-living material, which is not science because it's not observed ever, anywhere. It doesn't happen. Life always comes from other living materials that already exist. Well, where did first life come from? It doesn't just spontaneously happen. But that's what you have to believe in order to believe in, in the atheist religion of the Big Bang and evolution.